This conference hi. will now be recorded. So hi, Natalia. Thanks so much for actually sharing a bit about your sales efforts at Nuvia, what you achieved, and also how you collaborated, what you get out of it. Could you tell us a bit more about Nuvia and what you do to make this kind of more sustainable? Yeah, sure. Happy to talk and exchange. Thanks, Manuel. Uh, Nuvil is a Hamburg-based startup, and we developed and built um, electric trailers for bicycles with patented sensor technology. So you can connect our e-trailer to any bicycle uh, and uh, transport 150 kilogram in very densely populated urban area without making any effort. That means that the trailer automatically follows you and accelerates and brakes, to uh, brakes together with the bike. And it can also be used as a hand card uh, for uh, indoors and uh, in pedestrian areas. And I think that's that's such an amazing feat, like technologically, but also how you use in, in the last mile logistics, but also for other companies. And you mainly sell to B two B companies, like you you manage to get, to win flagship clients such as IKEA or UPS as client. Could you tell us a bit more how that came to play and how it's evolving? Yeah, so um, I think it's quite important for us um, to bring a solution that solves the last mile um, problems and challenges. And that's why we've been working together with UPS and IKEA quite early on, and we took them on the journey of the product development. So uh, in the very early stages um, of the product development, we you know, took all the requirements, the challenges and the problems of the customers, but also uh, of the infrastructure, the last mile delivery cities, what are the problems? And we tried to, or we integrated uh, all of them in one product and uh, tested a lot. It's the user experience, functional operational test and uh, con continuously improved it. And I think this is the way how to work with uh, big customers. It's a, uh, Continue, it's bring them on early on and um, uh, keep testing, keep improving, and um, you know share or provide a very good customer service. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And could you share a few thoughts on like what happened over the last three to six months? We've been working together in your sales as well. How that's ramping up? Yeah, yeah, that's been really, uh, really good timing in ter in terms of the training and coaching because this is the time when we. Uh, expand our business and sales and what's um, very helped me is um, you know your approach to expanding the sales team starting from the onboarding to development plans interviews recruiting process uh, so you know the structured and well organized plan what people what kind of people uh, what to ask during the interviews really uh, help to um, to change the whole approach to onboarding and uh, uh, making the team bigger. Not only in nice. sales, by the way, also in operations. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's so interesting. Could you tell us a bit more about how you tackle sales operations as well and how we basically could collaborate on, on that and what it brought as a kid to quantify results on that as well? Yeah, so it's basically, um, you know, there are people, there are many different types of people that we have. So sometimes there are people with little experience, sometimes uh, people with, who are more experienced. And for them, you have to, or uh, like as, as, as a head, co-founder or managing director, you have to create onboarding process, uh, training process and development plans. And um, the more structured you are, uh, the better results you'll get, basically, and it's especially helpful for those who don't have very little experience, like interns or like one to two years experience, because if you set up the goal or development plans early on, uh, you will uh, set up your team to achieving these goals. And that means that from early on, you basically work on achieving these goals, either in sales, in the productivity, how many uh, products you want to produce per day, per month, per week. Uh, leads generation opportunities. So it's all in the um, um, basically development plan and, uh, and also it helps communication because then you align your expectations. So it's also quite good for the team dynamic and communication. Yeah, I fully agree. And it's, it's a question we often get from founders that they like, hey, let's work on process and structure and assets once we have somebody and then let the junior person basically define the sales assets. You started with that much earlier on, like before you brought on like sales accounts, executives and VP sales. Absolutely. Why was that and what, 
what what triggered you to do that much earlier actually yeah so i think once i've been asked one founder ask uh you know the normally founders do sales at the beginning on their own and the major risk is that when they bring someone in the sales and then you know you lose this connection to customers and the question is how not to lose and the only way to respond to this uh, on my side was to create um scripts uh create documentation uh describe the processes as much as you can the better it's described the uh, you know the more it's described and the more informative it is for a newcomer the better the person can adapt and learn and also is what's important is do a lot of training with the newcomers it's especially with the, those in sales i think because as founders we we might not have experience in sales, but we learn a lot uh, yeah. through the customers and communication, and we know how the industry works. So, and newcomers, if they come, if they are from the same industry and bring the network, it's great. If not, you have to spend time, and it's an investment, and it's so important. Uh, but then you um, spend more time at the beginning, and then have a bigger impact later. So, I think this initial phase when you uh, structure and plan the training. Uh, for the newcomers, what's happening in the first two weeks or the first day, first two weeks, four weeks, uh, two months, three months, and what uh, targets we want to achieve together really, really helps. Yeah, and this is something we, so much we, we discussed together, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what's what's kind of a cash flow impact is roughly of ramping a new salesperson one month earlier? I'm just curious on that. If the person yeah, is one um, month early, fully productive. Yeah, I think um, it's you know it's 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 as every investment there are of of, of course risks and I would suggest uh, not to expect um, a lot in the first month. You know, I am someone who would rather invest at the beginning and not to push or stress the person and say the first month you have to generate that that and that. Uh, I do we do set up the uh, the goals uh, and the targets, but. At the later stage, I would rather take it slowly the first month, and I will do. Um, you know, the person needs to learn about the industry, about the communication with customers, internal processes. I will take the person to the pilot projects to uh, to run and cycle. You know, to just understand how it works. The first month, it's very, it's it's a lot of learning, so I would not expect yeah, to yeah. perform straight away. So in this way, it's an investment on my side, and then we talk about the leads and. I think it's really crucial because it's slow, but if you invest at the beginning, uh, you will get more um, more later. Yeah, definitely. And who would you recommend to like which type of, of B2B founders to specifically invest into sales acceleration and sales enablement? I um, I would uh, re it's I think it's rather the stage of the startup I'd recommend because there are yeah. um, mistakes that we done and uh, that can be for sure avoided if you bring the right coach the right person or experienced person uh, early on so i think these are the um, startups which already have early adopters custom uh, early customers and who want to expand their team so how to, you know to jump from this really really early leads and adopters into the proper first sales and to do it in a structured way and with a bigger team so it's not found to do the sales but uh the people that they bring in so i think this is exactly the stage where uh experienced coach and a mentor can really help yeah yeah i appreciate that uh, anything else you'd like to share with thanks already for taking so much for taking the time to share a few few learnings on your side um what i can say is that uh it's particularly difficult for uh, startups to work with uh, big customers and B2B customers. And I think the key here is really to listen to them. Uh, if your customer says, look, we we'll like, would love to work with you, but uh, we're slow because we are a big corporate, you have to take it and not to push it. Uh, to take it and okay and try to think outside the box okay if this industry is slow or this particular customer is slow what are the other opportunities how to generate more leads so always listen to your customers because customers always give you a really good feedback and the tip how to develop your sales and how to create the strategy sales strategy uh, absolutely absolutely and what's the sales achievement you're most proud of of 2020 <laughs> 
Um, actually, uh, the great thing is that um, the follow-up orders from our key accounts, uh, that you know, with those who work since 2018, so it's there is a continuous follow-up orders. We uh, uh, got to know uh, more other key accounts uh, that became key accounts for us. And also the great achievement for us is that we started generate, generating leads and opportunities uh, through our website and nice. uh, without doing cold calls. So our customers uh, reach us out and uh, yeah, so my approach is to not to do the cold calls and you know completely get rid of them and uh, get the customers <laughs> um, to approach us. Yeah, that's great if it works everything in band. And Otario, thanks so much for taking the time. If anything, like just call me up and all the best of success. Thank you, likewise.